Now, this week began with the announcement that the Dalek's arch enemy, Doctor Who, would transform into female form in the next incarnation. Jodie Whittaker will break the all-male mould by taking the coveted role after Christmas. Well, later in the week, advertisers were put on notice that they would be facing tougher rules from their watchdog, the Advertising Standards Authority, on gender portrayal. I'm reorganising my living space. Pampering Hector. Rehearsing with the girls. Before writing down my innermost thoughts. That's nothing compared to Captain Awesome's Day. <laughs> or I'll uncover enemy secrets. It doesn't just happen by magic. Behind every great Christmas, there's Mum. Yorkie, please, mate. Yorkie, please, mate. Oh, you want a Yorkie, do you? Yeah. <laughs> You're not a bird by any chance. You're having a laugh. Explain the offside rule, then. A player cannot be in an advanced position of the opponent's last defender when the ball is played. Open that. What kind of flowers are these? Purple. Funny? Yeah. Stockings are tight. Stockings. Oh, look! A big hairy spider! You know, that wrapper really brings out the beautiful blue of your eyes. Really? Yorkie. <laughs> the party big masculine chance of chocolate. It's not for girls. Women, don't expect any help on a Thursday. It's going to be okay for an ad to show a woman chopping or, or cleaning. It's going to be okay for an ad to show a man doing a DIY task in the home. What we're going to be looking at is ads that go beyond that, ads that paint a picture that it's, the, for example, the woman's, woman's role to, to tidy up after her family who trashed the house. That's her job in life. We're worried about that sort of depiction. Similarly, ads that, that mock men for being hopeless at performing straightforward parental or household tasks just because they're a man. So the ad men and ad women will be under scrutiny about time, say some, while others say it's another example of our PC conscious society. So are we too sensitive to stereotypes? Well, joining us now are Angela Epstein, a journalist and broadcaster, Otega Uwagba, a writer and a brand consultant who has worked in advertising, Emma Dabiri. Uh, I've got that wrong. Dabiri. <laughs> I, she's just told me that. <laughs> and I've got it wrong. Dabiri. Emma Dabiri is a social historian and feminist. And Luke Gittos is still with us. Well, Emma, I'll, I'll obviously need to come to you first because <laughs> I've got your name wrong. Uh, right. Are we getting a bit, this is going over the top, this is a bit too PC conscious, isn't it? Regulating advertising for something like this? No, it's not, it's not over the top at all. And if you listen to um, what the guy who was just speaking was saying, he was, it, was, it was very reasonable. It's not saying that um, women can't... Um, do any kind of domestic work in an advertisement or men can't do anything that is kind of more traditionally assumed with being the man's role but they're looking for kind of more pernicious um, messages that are um, that are kind of um, affirming stereotypes and it's not as though advertising is some benign um, industry that just seeks to disseminate information it absolutely is um, trying to condition us to think in certain ways and it's absolutely necessary that we have a regulatory body that makes sure that that's not done in ways that are extremely damaging, which has often been the case in the past. Yeah. Uh, Angela, the, the Advertising Standards Authority chief exec said, tougher advertising standards can play an important role in tackling inequalities. I think the whole thing is a load of rubbish, to be quite honest. I mean, at the moment, we have a female prime minister, a female monarch, the most <coughs> powerful person in the judiciary is a woman. Uh, but bearing in mind, these women have all been brought up watching Hands That Do Dishes and Fairy Liquid adverts. It clearly hasn't been but a retrograde a, a step. we have a massive gender pay gap. We have all sorts Those of Those are all important conversations. Without question, where, hang on, if I may, wherever, wherever, wherever there has been inequality, that's where there, there has been 
clear inequality. I should earn the same as you if I was doing the same job, without question. I don't care whose face is on a banknote, whether it's a man or a woman, as long as I get the same number of banknotes as you. But what gender stereotypes do is they catch the accent of what really plays out there. I mean, talking about benign gender stereotypes, they're an exaggerated truth. So very quickly, you know, I'm Jewish, I'm a mum, I've got kids. So if I fuss over somebody and said, oh, you, you know, you haven't eaten your, your dinner or, or are you okay? And, and I have this from colleagues who say, oh, you're being the protective Jewish mother. I'm not offended by that because it, it's taking out a little side of my character and making it into an exaggerated truth. And I think that happens mm -hmm. with advertising. Women like to keep the house clean and nice. It doesn't stop them being high-flying well, okay. corporate <laughs> lawyers. <laughs> it, the, the two are not mutually exclusive. Well, and all they're really doing is, uh, is sort of, you know, playing on that Well, Ataka's has worked in advertising. Yes, Talk I'm to a former ad it. woman and I'm very pro the new regulation. I like, like Emma was saying, advertising, it's not necessarily journalism, which, you know, I understand that there's the free speech argument and the political correctness ad argument. Advertising is about influencing people to change their behaviour. It needs to be regulated like other businesses. And as to the stereotypes you just discussed, the protective Jewish mother is, like you said, a very benign stereotype. What well, isn't a benign stereotype are the kinds of stereotypes that are associated with, for instance, black men, black women, people of colour, disabled people, LGBT people. Stereotypes kill. The reason people like Trayvon Martin was shot down by George Zimmerman is because there was a stereotype of black men being criminals, well, and that's dangerous. Well, let's it's take it. Interesting you say that. I grew up, and I don't remember seeing any uh, positive black role models on telly during the mm -hmm. 80s, but it didn't turn me into a criminal. I mean, they, they were all villains, they were all criminals, they were all bad guys, but I'm, I'm doing something very different. So of are you. Course, it doesn't I, shape but, us, Of is course, it? but I think it's fair to say that we're probably exceptions. There aren't that many people of colour, if you turn on the BBC or if you turn on any TV channel, there aren't that many people of colour you'll find who aren't necessarily playing the kind of thug council of state yeah. stereotypes. So I think it's important that we have better examples take, of better role models. Take us into a boardroom, an advertising boardroom. Mm -hmm. Are there lots of women? Are there lots of black people? Uh, in the boardrooms, there are not. It's generally white men, which is something that I always found deeply problematic and it's something that I'm trying to counteract by changing that with my brand consulting but the problem the problem is with there are women and black people in advertising but they're at the bottom the decision makers the creative directors the strategists all of those those are white men and that needs to change okay it's like Luke, industries uh, throughout Luke, the country exactly Luke, when we're talking about the these uh, this regulation we're also talking about protecting men as well i mean that sort of stereotype of the man not being able to cook not being able to do things that's I also going to come into this as well. I don't think men or women need protecting from stereotypes. I don't know any uh, women who have their life choices determined by adverts because they don't exist. If you look across the board, uh, women are smashing gender stereotypes in all areas of society. They're outperforming men in professional life, in education. Um, they are leaving uh, any stereotypical vision of what women should do in the dust. So. The reality is that women can cope with stereotypes. If you look at the research that the ASA put together on this, it is junk. It shows that basically the way that people approach stereotypes is largely, uh, as the earlier speaker said, they treat it with fun. They treat it as a sense of... That's uh, you know, it's Joseph. That's it's, 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 they, they recognise that, that it's superficial. It's fun to them, what about the little kid who's watching? No, pe people can make a judgement about what in adverts reflect real life. Everyone recognises when an advert is Adults making a stereotypical point. Well, and, it's, but, it's and, so, hang, hang, it's like, if we're saying that adverts don't influence, then what's the point in adverts? Adverts well, do influence and they do have an important role. Well, they do, but the point is people can make informed decisions about their purchasing but based on adverts. Do they? they don't okay. have, look, the no one knows any woman who has had their life choice affected by what appeared Okay. Not advertisement alone, it's like a multi-tiered, yes, all, all, all these... Uh, uh, hang on. All, all of these ideas about what women can do and what women should be are coming from there, are coming from throughout society, across society. Advertising is just one prong so, of that. So let's hear from okay, Angela. So, Angela, okay. just, can I just put Sorry. this to you? The, that yes. Yorkie advert. Yes. How does that make you feel? It when you made see it? me laugh. I think the British, the British should be not so for women. No, it just didn't, I just didn't care because of all the things I've just said. I've got a 13-year-old daughter, for example, and she has three older brothers. So she should either be a tremendous tomboy, she's been brought up with, you know, mud and dirt and footballs, and not because I've said they've got to play with those things because they're boys, their instinct or the biology or whatever it is, is making them do those things. And she loves dolls and perfume and little glittery accessories. She says she wants to be one day a human rights lawyer. The next day she says she wants to own a beauty salon. There's all sorts of different things 
things going on in her head. And I don't want her to ever be diminished by choice because yeah. of equality. She has seen me as a working mother, and I don't think seeing an advert about, about fairy liquid or whatever, or any of these products, is going to in any way limit her choice. I think it makes yeah. us laugh, and we're consumers, and we want to know if that bottle of washing up liquid will do the job. Well, I, yeah, I've got a 19-year-old daughter, and I was quite uncomfortable looking back at that Yorkie advert. I've got to say, I mean, Emma, what, what do you think? Uh, the, I actually, uh, the Yorkie advert I didn't actually find like that, that yeah. problematic. I don't for think. little girls? Um, it's a really exaggerated um, sort of example of gender stereotyping adverts. And I think exactly. you can perhaps see if, you know, if you're slightly older, if you're intelligent, you can see that's a really exaggerated example. What's problematic are things like, you know, the Protein World Beach Body ad, which shows a really negative sort of, you know, stereotype of what a woman's body should look like. Those are things that young Coke girls, habit? those are things that young girls and teenagers see and internalize as what they should do. And it's the same thing with, you know, these adverts about mums look after Christmas. Why can't we show dads? Looking after Christmas, dads are doing the house. Okay. Do Coke it. advert. We're still talking about it 20 years later so because it was, such, it was such a rarity that let's it take, reversed. But the let's take, a, non, uh, uh, let's that take a non commercial break and go to Emma. Very good, Sean. Uh, we do want your views, and they're coming in thick and fast. Keith says stereotyping happens, stereotyping happens because, believe it or not, stereotypes actually exist. Burying your head in the sand and tutting about it isn't going to stop them from happening. Susan says if we're eager to accept that women can do anything, and we can, Thanks for clarifying. Uh, we should also embrace that we can be perfectly happy in the home roles that we have held for generations. But David on Facebook says, stereotypes have an effect in real life, so let's do something about it. And Sarah says on Twitter, it's about time that there was more equality in gender and the way it's portrayed. Stereotypes should be wiped out. We need to remember that anyone can do anything. And Marie on Twitter, the reason a stereotype becomes a stereotype in the first place is because it's a truism. Let people be people and teach children the same thing as well. Sure. Emma, thanks very much indeed. And thank you to our panel. I'm afraid we are out of time on this one.